Hey, explorers, what's the matter? Answer is, just about everything. Matter is anything in the universe that takes up space, which is everything from rocks to water, even air. Did you know that there are four natural states of matter? Solids, liquids, gases, and plasma. If you didn't know, plasmas are superheated gases, like lightning and the sun. I've got a fun experiment that you can do at home, which lets you play around with two of those states of matter in one substance. It's a non-Newtonian fluid, which means it's a solid and a liquid, sort of. Before we get to the experiment, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any fun in the lab. Plus, there's some links in the video description that'll help you follow our social media adventures. Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids are named after Isaac Newton. You might recall the name because he's the man who defined the natural force that we know as gravity after he famously had an apple fall on his head. A Newtonian fluid stays the same whether there's pressure put on it or not, like water. Water is a liquid, and if you press on it, it's still a liquid. A non-Newtonian fluid is a liquid, but as soon as it's under pressure, it becomes a solid, then turns back into a liquid. This is because it's a liquid with an undissolved solid suspended in it. We can easily achieve this at home if we mix cornstarch and water at just the right ratio. Then we'll get our very own ooze, or non-Newtonian fluid. If we put cornstarch and water together, the two will mix, but not combine. After we mix them, we'll get to see how it acts differently under pressure. To make some ooze of your very own at home, all you need is a half cup of water, one cup of cornstarch, a bowl to mix it in, and if you're like me and like to make it your own, some food coloring. I'm gonna use blue. I'm making a nice big batch with about 10 cups of cornstarch and a lot of water, but the process is gonna be exactly the same, so follow along. First, we add our cornstarch to our container that we're gonna mix it all in, and if you're like me and you're adding some food coloring, this is where you'll add that. For this, I'm gonna add about 20 drops. You don't need a lot of food coloring to make a big difference with this experiment. If you're using the amounts in the video description, you only need about three drops to take on that color, but I'm using about 20 because I'm making a lot. The next step is to add our water. We're gonna do this slowly, adding a little bit at a time and mixing it in with our fingers. As you add your water, if the ooze feels too dry, keep adding water a little bit at a time. If it starts feeling too wet and sloppy, you're gonna need to add a little more cornstarch. When you're adding the ingredients together, this might take a little bit of time to get the ratio just right. So don't be afraid to take a little bit of time with it. Mine is definitely calling for a lot more water than I was expecting. You add it in, you mix it around, and you just try to get it all kind of saturated through. I'm going to be back in a second because I'm going to add a lot of water to this. Now it's kind of funny to mix it in because there's clearly some parts that are already oozed and they're becoming very hard to mix because as soon as I put pressure on them to scoop, they turn into a solid but then back into a liquid as soon as I've got it. So I'm really slowly adding water at this point in order to try to get that right ratio. Still very dry though, so I'm adding a little more water at a time and just trying to get it all together. Oh yeah, see like you can still see the crumbly dry bits, so that means I'm just going to keep adding a little more water at a time. But it does get tricky as soon as it becomes ooze. Uh, and it becomes a solid, oh. oh, it becomes very solid, and then just liquid, liquid in your hands. So to find that ratio, we're just adding tiny, tiny bits of water at a time. And I'm just clawing through to try to find these solid pieces, see if there's any dryness in there, but it is turning back into a nice ooze. Oh, that is wicked. Oh man, oh, that is so slimy and cool. I am really glad that I made a lot of this because this stuff is fun. Like with anything, you gotta experiment. So I'm gonna add a little bit more blue food coloring because it only seems to have taken on a little bit. Few drops at a time. Mix that in. 
Now it's like this cool oil painting. So as you can see, you can pick it up, roll it around in your hand, and it's mostly solid, but the second you stop putting pressure on it, it turns back into this goopy liquid. You can tell you haven't hit the right mixture by two different things. If it's still really dry, you need a little more water. But if it's still splashy, then you need a little more cornstarch. Again, it's going to take a little bit of back and forth with this, but once you're done, the entire thing should be just this nice, goopy ooze that, when you hit it, actually turns solid and doesn't splash at all. Okay, I think I need just like the last tiny little bit of cornstarch. And then I think I might have hit my ratio. I think I've got the right ratio, so I'm going to give it the spoon test by smacking it with a spoon, and if it's not splashy, that means we've got ooze. Oh, it did it! Oh, oh, and it sucks into the spoon. It solidifies immediately because of a property called sideways shearing, which means when you put pressure on it, the water kind of moves out of the way and you get a solid. And now I'm just, now I'm just smacking it with my hand and it's solidifying, but the moment I stop putting pressure on it, it lets my hand sink right in. Ugh. Oh, look at that ooze. Gross. So now you'll be able to see that by pressing on it quickly, it turns into a solid. But once you wait a second, it turns back into a liquid. One of the best ways to see this is to actually just grab a clump in your hand and squeeze it together. All right, here's a very solid piece up in my hand. But as soon as I stop putting pressure on it, it just oozes straight through my fingers just like a very cool slime. Too bad it's not the kind you get superpowers from. Just be sure you don't make too much of a mess. I'm gonna be cleaning up the lab for a day or two. To borrow a phrase from the 70s, that's solid. Science! Here's a fun question. How do you get ketchup out of a bottle? Most people would say you turn the bottle over and smack the bottom. But that's actually wrong, because ketchup is a non-Newtonian fluid, which means if you hit the bottle, you'll make the ketchup thicker and it'll take even longer to come out. So you turn the bottle over and be patient. That's it. Now you can have tasty fries faster. Remember when you're disposing of your non-Newtonian ooze at home to not put it down your pipes. Don't flush it down the sink or toilet. Don't use a towel to clean it up and then wash that. It will damage your pipes really badly. To get rid of it, you gotta wrap it up in a regular garbage bag and put it out with the trash. I've put my ooze in a container large enough to stand in so I can put it through an extra test. As you can see, when I step on it quickly and add force, the ooze turns solid, but turns back into a liquid after just a couple seconds, and I sink right in. Oh, it's so squishy and gross. Now I just have to figure out how to get it out from between my toes. <laughs>